Um, so, to some extent, uh, I mean, it, you have been in your role for quite some time, but every time you look around, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. I mean, really, uh, ITV studios now are probably the largest, or depending how you look at it, the largest production companies going. I think we're one of them rather than the largest. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but um, yeah, no, I, my, I, I, we, I, we have been. Uh, I mean, the, the team at ITV. I think we, most of us, have been around since 2010 when Adam yeah. joined. And you're quite right. In that time period, the growth has been exponential. I think we're double the size we were back then. And and it sort of hasn't stopped in a way. I suppose you would say. How how do you? handle the complexity that you've, you've got uh, with so many different companies spread all over. Well, should we show a video first just to give oh, everybody, we should give the audience a flavor of what we do we should think, before indeed. we delve uh, into. We should indeed, why don't we do that? <laughs> how it all comes how together. Nicely, uh, <laughs> you reminded me that I failed in my duty to say, Not let's have a look at the tape. What a lot of stuff. Yeah, there just you when, go. <laughs> when those titles come at you at the end, wow. And yeah. then when you look at all the companies that come up after that. Mm. So when I say complexity, I, I wasn't. Uh, so how do you manage something as big as that? Well, I mean, I think you'll see from the, the, the breadth of the formats there. We are, we're working with some really talented people. Um, and we, we operate a label structure. So it's, it's, it's a multitude of little companies rather than one big a big company yeah. that just swallows everyone. And I think that that allows you to scale up and allows us to continue to scale up if we need to, because we're, we're a relatively decentralized organization and there's a lot of autonomy. For the creative directors running those labels, they choose what they want to uh, produce and to develop. And that is absolutely key to why we are where we are today. And that's not happenstance. That's you've chosen to do that, not to just merge yeah. these people together, but to yeah. keep them yeah. separate creatives. Yeah. At last count, we had 58 different labels. <laughs> Just counting them would take time. Yes, so 58 different labels, and the development and the production happens in those labels. And it is, you're quite right, it was a conscious choice, because it recognizes the fact that you can't, or we don't think you can force creativity. You have to let it come out of the people on the ground, and that's essentially what we do. So it's quite decentralized when it comes to creative. It's more centralized when it comes to commercial exploitation. So we tend to put a lot of our rights through Global Entertainment, which is the distribution arm, which is part of what I manage as well. And we also have a, uh, a really fabulous centralized format team run by a super Mike Beale, super man called Mike Beale, um, who uh, some of you might have seen earlier. He was on stage <laughs> here earlier today. Absolutely. And what the format team, what the centralized formats team do is they share intel, but it's very much a support and offer information and the, uh, the, the chances for people to get together, not imposed. That's not yeah, something because we do. Because I, I can't think really of another company mm. of similar scale that mm. does it that way. There is a sort of, you know, I was at Fremantle and, right. and that was very much just a, a big group. It's changed a bit since uh, that mm. I left, but that's a, a fascinating way to do it. So what's next, I suppose, is, is the question. Uh, your strategy for international productions. Um, so I think, so I do have a new role, <laughs> which is a few months well, in. Well, yes, but, <laughs> but I mean, you've is, been growing into. Yeah, absolutely. And um, the role is to manage the international team. And it just felt like it was the right time for us to do that, was to focus on international. Because last year was a really, that something happened last year, which is, what used to be very much a UK entity tipped into becoming more of a global company. It was the first year the revenues for the studios was, was generated more outside of the UK than inside the UK. So we, we tipped 53%, just tipped. Just tipped. But enough for us to know that most of the growth, our future is in growing international. We're already so large in the UK. We're already such an enormous production company and a successful production company. And I think if we're going to look at how we continue that success story, it has got to be through investing internationally. And, and are there some areas internationally that you want to put more strength in than others? Well, I think we're, um, we're in the right places. We're um, in, in the bigger Western European territories. We're in the creative hubs. We're in Australia. 
definitely in the US. Um, well, there's room for us to grow that, I think, in terms of scaling up in those territories. And I wouldn't say that we're, we've written off the opportunity of launching somewhere else, but it, it'll have to be a good opportunity for us. It'd have to be something that pulls us there. I, I personally, I'm fascinated by China. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I, yes, uh, I mean, that, yeah. you can't say more no. about that at the minute, but how, how do you, you know, work, again, that complexity question? You know, you've got a production company in Norway, we say, and, and a production company in Germany. And how do do you or does Mike Beal get those people to, while realizing that they are separate creative entities, to come together and talk together? Well, I, I mean, I, I say that they're autonomous, and I say that we run it fairly decentralized. But there is a real desire. People are curious to know how other producers or how there are the developers, how other creators are doing it. So we do bring them together. And there's nothing, there's no secret formula for that. It's what a lot of other companies do, which is you just give them forums to come together. And, um, and what, we, what we encourage is everyone to be creative, everybody to produce formats and everybody to contribute formats to what is a network of producers. Uh -huh. So we're not, we don't see it in quite the linear way of out of the UK into the rest of the world. We see it as creativity should come from every single one of our companies, irrespective of where they are. And you can see that in the slate we've got. You can see the fact that we you know, we're bring to market a brand new German format, a brand new Finnish format, a brand new Norwegian format. You know, there is a, there is a broad spectrum of where our shows are coming from. However, if, when you say the new German or the new Finnish, you also come back with some fabulous old, and I, I say old in the nicest yeah, possible yeah. way, proven and uh, continued successful formats. Yeah, yeah. So I think we've definitely seen a desire for broadcasters to retry and go back to what for us are the tried and tested shows. You know, the shows that have been succeeding and have a track record. Um, in other territories. So shows like Come Dine With Me, I think that was mentioned earlier. Yeah. Uh, still going strong, 37 territories. But it is important to refresh it. So we do come up with twists and variations and evolutions of all of those shows. Um, I'm a celebrity, still going really strong in the UK, very, very strong in Germany. It's had its second season in Australia. And, and it you know, virtually revitalized Channel 10 in, in Australia that was it's on the news. ropes. Yeah, it's uh, great news. Yeah, so uh, you know, it's, that's an oldie but a goodie. Yeah, and, ag and again, that one, because it was relatively expensive, we had to come up with a solution to roll it out. Mm -hmm. And the solution was a hub in South Africa. So we are constantly looking at those older formats of how you keep them fresh and new and make them available to everybody else. So I think, I think I'm a celebrity in 11 different territories thanks to that yeah. hub. Well, I'm glad you've got out of the rainforest because <laughs> that was one of the problems of an mm. earlier iteration. Mm. I can remember speaking to John Sade and he was somewhat disappointed about how it was going. I said, well, you do realize in a rainforest, it rained. <laughs> yeah, so that was a problem. Um, do you think the, um, that the success of the tried and true and proven uh, mm. formats says something about the adventurousness, or lack of it, of buyers? Um, no, I, would, I wouldn't, I wouldn't criticise them. It's never a good idea to criticise your buyers, but um, I, you can understand why they like to do it. But I also think that well, there's no shortage of new shows. We've, we've got a, we're bringing 15 to this market alone. And those aren't paper formats. Those are actual new formats, brand new ideas. So it's not that broadcasters are not commissioning new shows, not at all. I think it's a bit more of yeah. a balance for us. Although, you know, to, to some extent, the promise of formats is mm. that it's being proven somewhere. Mm. I mean, that's really part of the sort of underlying why buy a format. Yeah, absolutely. And it's always, you know, all buyers say they'd like to be the third person yeah. to, to <laughs> have a format. So early enough so they could brag about how bold they were, mm -hmm. but let two other people go first. I think that's one of the strengths of ITV Studio, actually, is that we are getting a lot of shows away. Across the network of, of, of creatives, a lot of shows are getting commissioned. So they are being tested. Yeah. And of course, you do have, mm. you know, I was going to say the elephant in the room, but I mean, part of the ITV structure is that at least you have a willing ear mm. in Britain with ITV broadcasters to hear your 
stories. It's a, it's a really important relationship, but I don't think we should overplay it, really, because it's the strength of the creators, really, that is getting our shows away, not so much that um, ITV are assigning us certain slots. I mean, ITV network have to produce the best. They have to commission the best, and everybody understands that. Um, I mean, I mentioned 15 shows. Yeah. Ten of those are non-ITV shows. They're for the BBC, they're for Sky, they're for Channel 4, they're for German broadcasters. You know, they are, we, it, is, it is not the case that of those 15 shows, they're all coming on ITV. No, 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 I'm sorry if I appeared to be implying that, but it is a wonderful something to have in your pocket that a lot of mm. large production companies would kill for. Hmm. I think I think we've um, we've done well out of being an integrated broadcaster and producer, but the real growth has come because we've invested in the studio, and the real growth has come because we've brought in a lot of very very good producers. Yeah, and those producers have to sell in their home markets hmm. first. I mean, and so that's really how the, the your business grows with them being successful in their markets. Are you, are you finding that the, the definition of what is a format is changing? Uh, because you have this wonderful ability to have a snapshot at the world. Mm. Do you see that different people are regarding formats in different ways? I think so. I think so. We, we, what we've seen is that it's not just the gaming elements people are interested in. They also want to know how you made it. Um, and there are shows where they're relatively complicated to make. And it's the experience of how you cast them, how you pick your locations that really, really matter and make them successful. And the best example for us is a show called um, Keeping Your Nation Alive, which is from The Garden. And it had, a, it had an interesting start in life in that it was a smallish show for BBC Two, it was a smallish documentary for BBC about the National Health Service, not particularly something I think the rest of the world would be interested in. But actually what it was, was a very ambitious, um, attempt to capture the most dramatic moments in people's lives. So 100 cameras in a 24-hour period were scattered across every aspect of the health service, from you know, the births, the deaths, the ambulance services, the surgeons, every single aspect of that. That's relatively complicated to do. And we've managed to roll that out in eight different territories now. Two more to come, and everywhere we take it, it's a critical success. It's just been on in Australia as well. Yes, I, I left when they were promoing it. Right. Did, did it work well? Lots and lots of critical success for Yeah, because it's beautiful emotion. It is, it's wonderful. But you are right that even when you say small, only mm. 100 cameras, <laughs> uh, it's how you place them and how you can actually do that on the budget. So the, the know-how mm. that doesn't it's not obvious on screen, but it, it's the know-how in the production is what people are licensing from you. Absolutely. The result speaks for itself, I think. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, there's no doubt about it. Um, it's, it's also almost, you know, sort of achieving a social good, isn't it, as well? I, I mean, I, no, don't you think that it, it is actually making people look at their health services? Well, I think it's not, you know, you shouldn't look at it as a political piece. I think it's more about human emotion. It's more about capturing a moment where it really literally is life or death. It's that drama. It's just, it's just raw. That, that's what it is. It's not, I don't think it's anything to do with politics at all. I think it's just about capturing that moment in people's lives that is so important. Um, and that's what I think the show does really, really well. Despite yeah. all the technicalities of a hundred camera, what you, what you end up with is some really beautiful stories. Yes, and of course, uh, of course, in different countries of the world, you have to clear all those people that are on the edges of the hundred camera shots, and that's mm. a nightmare. But again, that's the production expertise. Mm. But, and of course, you know, we're, we're serious about that and, and those emotions, but you, you do allow yourself to have total fun with uh, shows that are uh, proudly silly. Uh, you've got one, or Cannonball, I was oh, thinking. Yes, in Australia. Another one back, back in Australia. <laughs> yes, so we've gone, in Australia, we've gone from keeping Australia alive on ABC to the new one that will be on Seven, Cannonball. And Cannonball is tremendous fun. I mean, it is a big entertainment show in its true form. It's imagine if the Olympics were set in a water park. If you just <laughs> throwing themselves off giant slides. 
And, and if they do it in Australia, half of them will be drunk. Uh, <laughs> but that's just the way of Australia. Uh, uh, to, I was with Bibi Anne, I was talking, and she was looking at France and France only about digital. Mm. And uh, she sort of said, yeah, we don't quite know where the money is. Mm. How, how are you approaching um, non linear TV formats? Well, I heard, I, I caught the, the end of what Bibian was saying about that. It, it is a tough one, it's a head scratcher. You know, making just for digital exploitation doesn't, doesn't seem to be delivering the, the value for us at the moment. But it is an essential element of a lot of the formats, not all the formats. I see. So it's an extension piece for us. Yep. It's something that we want to spend more time doing and right at the inception of the show's life rather than after when it's too late. And there's certain shows that we know if they've hit and they've connected with an audience and become social media phenomenons. Love Island when it was on, also because it played so young. Yeah. Um, young adult, not young, not child. I hope not children. Anyway. No, 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 of course not. Of course not. <laughs> um, young adult was that it, it was it was sort of the number one trending show on Twitter and Facebook. I think we had something close to 40 million impressions while it was on. It was huge. It was That's huge. That's amazing. Yeah. Uh, I'm a celebrity, for instance. I mean, you know how that reacts when that's on, and the reaction is um, it goes right the way through social media and the digital world as well. So you've got to be ready for that, and you've got to be ready for those extensions. And when you have gaming, when you have quiz shows and games, I think it is important right from the beginning to think about that. Think about how you can extend them and how you can connect the digital element to the show itself. Would you ever and, and consider sort of almost piloting or starting something on a digital platform and then seeing if that then was sufficiently strong to mm. take that to a, a, a linear buyer? Why not? We haven't done it yet, but why not? Yeah, why not indeed? But of course, this is the time MIP is selling the new things and you've got to get behind a new favourite that you're bringing to market. Is there one? that you uh, are excited that has been unseen? We do have a promo, but um, before we show it, I just want to reiterate that the, the strength of what we've been doing is to support all of the shows, to support all of the creatives. So we are launching 15 and we treat it that way. We do put 15 shows out to market. And one of the, one of the strongest feedbacks we've had from buyers is that what they like about us is the breadth. All the, all the broadcasters are looking for something different. And yeah. the fact is we can supply them with what they need. You had a showcase uh, we did. in, in yeah. London, didn't you? And you Absolutely. invited, I mean, again, it's tribute to the size mm. that you've got enough that you can invite people to spend, was it a day or two days? It was a day. A day uh, that you could really have this incredible mm. uh, extent. And I gather different buyers found different hot spots and, and things that they really responded to. Yeah, I, that's, that's the feedback we got. And I think as you see uh, more digital channels rolling out as well, it, it is important that you are supplying everybody with something that interests them. And I think that's what we've got. We've got a very broad, very interesting slate from all of the producers. But we are going to show the promo of one oh, well, of them, should, just yes. one of them, just yes, to so sort of let's... give everyone a taster. This is Drive. We've chosen it because it launches while we're here. It'll launch on ITV at nine o'clock on Tuesday night. So let's show you Drive. Yes, let's have a look at the clip of Drive. There you are. So Tuesday night, Tuesday ITV, night. nine o'clock, be there. I'd say tune in, but I don't think everybody here Yes, will I be. think, yes. <laughs> uh, Maria, thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, Maria Kirkcrew. Thank you, thank you. David. See you back there.